Hello, hello. It's good to see everyone who drops in. I am Teddy Ninja, and this lovely menu screen that you see in front of you is Balloons Tower Defense 6. I've been playing a ton of this game recently, and thought that it would be fun to stream and cut some videos for some of the unique challenge modes that they have, and they update periodically. Uh, I want to start here by running the race. All right, let's see here. The other thing I wanted to run was the Odyssey challenge. So I will, you know what, let's see, if I update, where do I do that? Uh, let's say uh, open, caps lock, open to testing community challenges. Just link the challenge code. Then I'll believe you see some other fun ones. And in the meantime, we'll work on the Odyssey levels. There we go. Oh, I think that's just duplicating it. All right, here we go. So for the Odyssey, we have four linked battles where you have to pick the monkey's types that you want to bring and how many of each one your lives carry over in between all the battles <coughs> which makes leaking balloons early on and some of the early ones kind of scary um, so you get to begin by doing the draft here and then you play through the levels and if you want to restart you have to go all the way back like say I mean, I, I tried running this one time. See how it went, a little sloppy, only had 20 lives for the last level and it just was not coming together. And also if you want to change what monkeys you're bringing, you're gonna have to start over. So first off for the hero selection, we're bringing Benjamin because he can get us money and he can get us lives back. Because the lives are cumulative, we really want to be ending levels with full health. Um, the levels we can view here, the different island rules. It's only 40 waves here. 40 waves is not usually enough to get the other money-making towers, give you full return on investment, but Ben Jammin should. This one with 80 waves is definitely a candidate for big money makers. Over here, 60 waves, again, investing in the money makers, not that great, but Benjamin worth it. And 60 waves, again. Um, so that's why we're bringing our hero. Our other options here, going to normal monkeys. Oh, let's just clear out the crew selected. So the basic monkey. I find myself not using the basic monkey very much at all. It could be just... A mistake on my part but I, I rarely use them because they scale so poorly. The tack tower is great. It's early game strength is so good and it scales pretty well it upgrades cheap. Glue monkey is my favorite type of crowd control monkey. The sniper also very effective. You can pick up uh, really good damage against moabs and also help you against camos which are the two bottleneck balloons, so you have to be able to take on those guys. Um, I do love the navy ships, and there's, from when I looked at the maps, there's a few spots with water. Not on every map, so we'll see how many of those we want to bring. Um, the mortar, I don't really use the mortar. The planes. Planes are good. They scale very well. They're kind of late game pieces right behind the super monkeys. Magic uh, is just confirming our crew. Start Odyssey. Journey of the Misplaced. All right. Cracked. Very fun map. Pretty easy. Gives us some very good um, placements for 
towers that do area of effect, like this. We want to get it so that the attack shooters placing to the left here are going to be able to get guys. And then we want our magic monkey as an early game mainstay. I'm going to place him pretty early here. We're going to run it. So ideally we want to just cruise through this, no life lost. Monkey experience doesn't carry over, and I don't think hero experience does either. It'd be fun if they ran a custom um, rule set where your hero could level up throughout all of the missions. And then they could crank up the difficulty on some of the final sets. But here we go. We're going to hope that that tack shooter is enough to help thin stuff out. And again, going for the fireball helps us take care of lead balloons. Otherwise, could really ran on our parade. And then here we'll let our little wizard handle camos. So he's going to be the one-stop shop for the beginning. And then once we scale up a little more, we'll go for um, Necromancer, which he comes in late enough into the game that it's hard to see exactly how much work he puts in. It just feels like he puts in a lot of work. I basically never see balloons getting past where he's spawning his balloons onto the path. So he's early enough. <clears throat> the really big Moabs could get through them. Alright, we're gonna go wall of fire here. Get that running. <coughs> mm, sorry. Just looking for this upgrade, and it's gonna make a big difference for us. Wildfire and no a wildfire, major difference in stopping power. Man. I have played so much balloons. They were popular as flash games. Back when I was playing tons of flash games in middle school, I've played every game in the series. It's pretty incredible. But this game still has the community it does. It's two years old, but it is still here. And people making challenges for it. People streaming it. Alright, we're going to slow things down here and figure out what our next tower is. Ooh. I think we play... I mean, we want Benjamin, but I think it's too early. We need a little more stopping power. So we're going to go with the Druid. <clears throat> and we're going to go for the attack speed Druid. He's early enough that he, he'll effectively gain attack speed as long as he's continuously attacking. And being this early in the level, he should just always attack. But yeah, I played Bloons before it was even branched into the tower defense when it was just... You were setting the angle of your darts and it was like a puzzle game where you'd throw your darts and try different formations. Do I need to get this for the attack speed? Then I remember that I played most of my Flash games on a site called Armor Games and then the Balloon Star Defense games were being put out by uh, Ninja Kiwi Studios and they were on Newgrounds. And they were one of the few games that would get me to switch over to Newgrounds to play over there instead of just finding stuff on, on Armor Games. But it was pretty great to see that the, the franchise had so much staying power that here it is on Steam. Boggles my mind. Nice. 
All right. So now we need to start thinking, what's going to stop the Moab at the end of the game? What's going to stop the camo balloons? Well, the wizard monkey right now is going to handle the camo balloons. The druid is really only helping us against the standard balloons. So we need something that's going to bring Moabs down. Well, the alchemist monkey is a pretty good pick for that. So he's going to come in, target strong. This is bonus against the Moabs, and then the brew will give our guys um, better damage against Moabs as well. Let's speed it back up. Level up. <clears throat> hmm. What else are we going to need? I mean... I would love to get the Necromancer, but I don't think he is really good enough. Going up here will help improve these towers effective, and I think that's worth it. Let's slow it down a little. Um, hmm. What else really helps us fortify against the Moab? Well, we could go for the second alchemist that we're allowed. We could also bring in... The thing is that the plane is super expensive. The helicopter... Getting Moab shove is so good. Alright, lock in place. Right in front of my towers. I always need to double check its upgrade path. Okay, so Pursuit is up here and Moab Shove is down here. So we take Pursuit and then we take Moab Shove as quick as we can. In that order. Faster darts. It's too bad that he can't punch through leads. I'm sure there is an upgrade for it. I think it's up here, but we're going to... We're going to forego that to be able to get Moab Shove, because Moab Shove will absolutely handle the last level. And then we probably want to put... Hmm... Get Shimmer. Yep, that's a lot of camos. I want to make sure that we handle the camos. It's like so just leaking... A few balloons in the Odyssey, in a normal level you wouldn't care at all, but because all of our levels are going to be linked here, oh, yeah. we really don't want to leak early and then be at a disadvantage when the levels actually start getting hard. Uh, do I put any money into the tax shooter? It delays getting Moab Shove. Moab Shove doesn't help us until the very end. I think... I mean, we're gonna have enough. Either way, hopefully. Boost attack speed and pierce for other druids. Red Thunder. Stronger stimulant. Hmm. Well, we almost have Moab Shove. We'll take the Moab Shove, and then... We'll see what other pieces we want to improve. I think we give the druid his Chain Lightning. Especially because he's gotten his attack speed amped up so much. Alright, now... Now we're pretty free in what we improve. Hmm. The magic monkey is putting in work, our wizard. We could... I think we wait for Necromancer. And that that will be a really strong push for us. The late game piece. Normally around this time is when I start looking at super monkeys, but not allowed to take super monkeys as part of our crew this round. Here we go. Real stopping power. And we'll bring in another alchemist here but he's gonna go 
damage. Yeah. He's gonna try and help handle the Moab. Which, oh, here it comes. Moab shove is so good. Moab shove on the helicopter is so good. It's on the level of I'm surprised oh, yeah. they released it the way it does. All right. So first one down, full health. That's what we expected, just taking care of business. Moving on, we are going to sail on to Hedge. Medium, standard, balloon speed, amped up 10%. And this one, even though they call it medium standard, we're getting the full 80 waves. So, we'll see how this plays out. Ah, the hedgerows. Pretty clean starting space for another uh, position I'm just so. Magic Monkey. Get the fireball running. Intense magic after that. I think intense magic after that. Yep, yeah, it's really awesome to see the series live on as a Steam game. I'm not sure if they plan on releasing any more. This game's two years old, so it's had pretty good life and still has a strong community, so I don't see why they wouldn't continue the series with as successful as it is, because they do sell premium currency with the microtransactions. I assume that it is doing pretty well for them as a studio. Hmm. Are you gonna get it? You got it. Yes. Yes. Oh man. Positioning these guys is a nightmare. Because if you click while the monkey's red, it freezes your game. And then you have to reset him. Come on. Oh, it's there. Oh man. So finicky. Probably the one thing I wish they would change. And I do like the attack speed druid a lot actually, so we're gonna build for that again. Give him better thorns. There we go. And now is when we start thinking about what our next um, adaptation is. We're gonna want the wizard monkey to get his wildfire and the camo balloons. So then again, he's our one-stop shop for stopping both leads and camos. And that takes care of the camos. Another push for getting the leads. And then with 80 rounds, our hero for money production is gonna be amazing. I think, yeah, we save up for wall of fire and then we push for it. When I'm playing just standard, I usually try and think that between rounds 15 and 20, I save up for a banana farm and build the banana farm. And so if we just translate the banana farm to our hero, Benjamin, um, which is pretty one-to-one -one translation, we'll go for that. And then his, his return on investment, I mean, you can't upgrade him as far as the um, banana farm, but you still, get a lot of money back from him because you don't have to put any money in for upgrades. It's just once he's down, he's given you so much value. It'd be fun if they made a mode. 
I'm sure they have actually, where you can use multiple heroes. I just haven't seen one recently. Oh, the balloons are coming in fast. We could put a little tack tower out here just to slow them down, but we're so close to getting Benjamin that I think we just hold out for that. Round 18. So we'll put him down hopefully round 19. That's pretty on track for where I want to be for clearing this. And then if we do leak any, he should get us back to full. I always try and put the money generators... Well, this really doesn't matter for him, does it? I usually put my banana farm there. That's why I just popped him down there out of habit. Because the hero powers pop up down here. So I want to hover my mouse, pick up bananas, and click. But I mean, Benjamin, I don't have to pick up bananas. He's wonderful. I think we go for the druid attack speed boost. Get him really rolling. And then we get the alchemist buff. We are going to leak a few here, but Benjamin will be able to bring us back up. Over, so, man. not to worry. Game over, man. Going for a helicopter is going to be pretty strong. Going for a sniper is also strong. Um, they form a nice little core of monkey. But just upgrading the existing towers we have, I think, is our best round because that way they make even better use of the upgrades we've given them. Once this guy gets his lightning, then he'll be really rolling. Level up. We do want Moab shoved though off of the helicopter. I know it probably feels a little redundant because it's so similar to the build that we used last time, but this time at least we're gonna see all the rounds. And the costs are different, so the scaling of the build is going to be quite different. It's just that when they limit your selection of monkeys, you're still going to be using kind of the same core team every round, and it's a matter of figuring out how you adapt that team's placement to um, the specific level that you're in. With all these camos coming, we do want to think about getting Shimmer. Um, yeah, I think we take it before Moab show. I think there's going to be one more round with a lot of camos before the Moab. So those are our two priorities. And those two upgrades with this cost scaling are going to be a lot more expensive. So that's probably all we're going to be able to have before the Moab comes. Five rounds to pick up 3,500. We should be able to pick that up fairly easily, especially with Benjamin going and leveling up. And then that should be enough power to stop the initial Moab. It'll be deciding where we want to go after that. That's going to be an important decision. We have a lot of good options. We still have not locked ourselves out of any, any monkey choices. We have this guy who's buffing any monkeys that we place here alongside our forward defenses, so feels good. Honestly, putting a snipe, well, hmm, normally it's fun to put a sniper in here because you, you think of snipers like putting them in the corners so they don't take up valuable space. Here though, with the hedge, putting a sniper in here is cutting off his view of all the rest of the levels, so. Doing that is not the choice that we want to make. Um, I mean, getting the Necromancer is going to be nice. It brings him up a lot, and we're close to it already. I think we play for that before we bring in a new tower. There we go. Oh man. 24,000. Yeah. What's here? Hmm. 
Do we wait for our cane spike 10,000 monkey money away? That seems pretty steep when we could get Comanche defense for 8,500. You can also get these up. Hmm. I think. Oh, yeah. oh. The Navy's locked out. Other. I don't really like the plane. Well, we could squeeze a plane in and he could actually be close to the Alchemist. Meaning that he would get the buff from the Alchemist, which would be awesome. I've never seen the Arcane Spike though. Just because I've never seen it, I think I'm going to push for it. And because the Magic Monkey... Or the Wizard Monkey, I should say. Magic Monkey is the whole type of the purple background guys. The Wizard is such a good starting piece. And it's, it's just going to be good to know how well he scales up for the end game. So it's pitting him with Arcane Spike. They're going the top upgrade path. Versus... Nope, not him. This guy going down the bottom upgrade path. And they've both just taken the two in the middle because... I feel like the versatility of having that extra attack and wall fire is awesome, while this guy with the bottom is giving him the benefit of still being able to attack camos. So the Necromancer is a little more support, and this guy should be a little more damage, but we'll see how it ends up shaping up. Uh, guys, handle this. Mm, second Alchemist. We need to be able to really handle Moabs. We're handling everything else pretty well, so... I think we even go for the Transform here. We're just making so much money with Benjamin. Now it might seem like I am just ignoring Benjamin's abilities. He is... Or down here to the... I have to go to info? Alright. You can use the biohack. The four closest monkeys pop an extra layer per attack for six seconds, which is amazing. And, but then affected monkeys can't attack for two seconds after the effect ends. So you do a ton of damage and then it shuts your monkeys down. Because we're using so few monkeys, that would just open us up to getting smashed. So staying away from it. But once we get up here, siphon funding. Um, is very nice. It downgrades the rank of the balloons you see, but then it doubles the money you get from popping them. So you should have an, both an easier time and bigger earnings. Which is a very nice combo. We'll go for our next druid here. This druid, we're gonna want. Oh, he's so frustrating right to place. Nope, messed him up. Alright, here we go again. There we go, let's take the easy route. I want him to have the knockback strength. Can have more range here or do a little more damage here. Actually, I actually like the range and speed buff. And here we see, I forget exactly when Benjamin yeah. picks up the ability to give you hearts back at the end of every round. But he has, so we're back up to a hundred after we leaked those early balloons. So we're still looking pretty good. Um, it looks like Benjamin is also giving us bonus cash off of popping some of these, so that's fun to see. Alright. Now... Let's go help stop the leaks. He can hit the end here, here, here. It's pretty good coverage. All right. What build do we want to take him down? Mame Moab? This is probably the best. Because towards the end of the game here, that's really going to be what stops us. And with 
our necromancer if he's gonna let us handle any level of candle noise that we see. I'm actually tempted to wait all the way to Oh we can get him that. Yeah. Uh guys. Ninety thousand. Handled it. Forty five thousand. We're looking for some of the later hmm. Getting our support up is going to be nice, because he's buffing a lot of very high quality towers right now. So I think we'll punch that up. And then... Yeah, this is actually looking good because the 24,000 puts it... It's hard to find with all the, the zombie balloons. It puts it in the realm of something we can actually buy by saving up for the next like 10 rounds. It does mean that our sniper will not get any kind of finished build. It should be fine. I mean he's adding a little bit. Ah, go this way. Then we're strong. So he does so much damage you want him slowing down the strongest balloons, which are also usually the fastest. So you want to pick them off as early as possible. Give your other towers a chance to handle them. It's interesting that he can spawn the balloons back where he has no reach. Sometimes when I look at features like that, I think of. I did a little bit of coding in uh, college, and I think about like how you would program games and potentially see where bugs are, like them not being able to spawn if it's blocked out versus, you know, saying specifically that they can, stuff like that. Kind of interesting that they're able to get that in. A little bit of attention to detail goes a lot. They could be cutting you out of as much as half of some balloons, and then the double money just kind of equalizes. But then there's other ones like the yellow downgraded to a green. You're just down one cash, and then when you pop the green, you get double, so... And everything else after that, my understanding is. So, so you come out ahead. And I am excited to see this final form, Prince of Darkness. Have never actually gotten him before. So... I'm looking forward to what he's gonna bring. I wish I could hover over and see what they're calling this, but... It's a count of how many... Uh, zombie balloons he has spawned in. He just spawns them in here and then they go to the edge of his range and then they vanish. The thing is there is some kind of mechanic that he only brings them in if you've killed other balloons. So again some of these uh, where they only spawn the big moabs, he doesn't have any balloons to resurrect and then it's basically useless until you pop something but as part of its value is using you to pop things so you're kind of down on your luck when that happens you need to have other ways to deal with them all that which really those are the two bottlenecks of the game you have mobs and camos and then you need to be just efficient enough with your other towers so you can handle the the plain balloons they have, you know, the ceramics, fortified, oh, look at that glorious, glorious final level, oh, he's huge, he's sitting on like a throne, I love it, I love it, oh my gosh, he's spawning, he actually brings up the moabs that we break, oh, he's so good. Unbeatable. I wish I understood what allows him to bring them in. Because were we actually popping moabs just all the way off screen and that's why he was bringing them up? Or is it just if we do like a certain amount of damage, you can bring in some? Ooh, they got pretty far there. Thankfully, the undead balloon stopped them. Fine, nothing to worry about. Three rounds to go. I wonder if he's able to bring in the... Ah, oh, it's the green one, the ZOMG. I forget exactly what they even call it. 
We'll see what pops up down here. I still got all the boxes. I haven't turned off the no, no tutorials. It kind of helps what to expect to deal with. Thank goodness our helicopter is on pursuit because once it gets behind that hedge, we do not have any any access to popping those. I do wish that he was not spawning them so far back. I don't know if they see... Oh, he's getting a huge range boost from our... That's interesting. I wonder if that's actually putting us at a disadvantage with the way... Because, like, I wish it didn't take them all this space to get to popping balloons. But at the same time, for any balloons to escape, they're going to have to go all the way through what he spawns. So, maybe it is just as good for us. It probably is. What will be a final tower or final upgrade for the last round? We can go for a plane. We can go for a second helicopter. We could upgrade our current helicopter. I think that's all we do, is upgrade the current one. Because I love the Moab shove so much, I feel like going this way is probably the best final upgrade is the one that I would real um, I say I wanted to say the one that I would realistically see in a game but for 35,000 I don't think I'm gonna realistically see it until I push for um, free play hey Treadmaris you want to do some co-op matches I do a co-op match with you this round is just about done, so you're, you've kind of got perfect timing here to hop into a game. Let me know if uh, that's what you want to run. Go back to the Odyssey. Let's see, how long have we been running? The little ping. I think we'll do one more level, and then we'll save the final level of the Odyssey for later. I would like to get to it though. We'll see. Alright. Continue our Odyssey. Map 3. So I have run this before, and failed. And it was largely because of this map. I made it past and got hung up on the one after. But that was because I leaked so many balloons on this map that I only had like 20 lives on the next one. And that's what screwed me over. I did not have the submarines though. And the subs are just such marvelous old towers. They can really carry your games. Hmm. This is interesting because now I actually don't like the subs once you get universal range you just put down cheap monkeys that will let you aim at the entire map but I specifically decided not to bring the cheap monkeys. So we'll see how much that bites me. Uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how much that bites me. I think we're gonna go... We're gonna try full navy. Play full navy. We'll put in... The boat now. There we go. And now he has to be... Our access to camel balloons if I want to keep up the subs with universal range. Giving them universal range isn't going to help because, I mean, their range is... It would extend their range a little bit, but not very much right now. So it's not worth to push for right now, but later on, we'll get some more towers down here. 
Maybe some early towers. What am I saying? We'll just put down a sniper. Right, because... Allows long range targeting of balloons in radius... In radius of your other towers. So... The sniper is able to target the entire map, but when you place him down, he does have a tiny radius. I wonder if that is specifically to stop you from doing, you know, the range upgrade on the subs and then a one sniper to give them the whole map so that they also, they just become cheaper snipers with cheaper upgrades that are just as effective. The subs are so good. So good. But then here I think we go grape shot, grape shot and hot shot. And then we're pretty set for this monkey buccaneer to handle what comes at us. Then we'll go improve the submarines. I want to take one down the bottom upgrade path, the other one around the top. So, hmm. I think I do twin guns first. Then our hero, Benjamin. Finish the sub upgrades. Extend other towers. Get them full range. And that build, hmm, yeah, that build sounds good to me. So now we just wait for Benjamin. I am curious, did any of you guys play a ton of Flash games when they were popular like five years ago? Basically they were big before the mobile gaming scene took over. And now, Flash games are basically just mobile games <coughs> that get released online. Is there any game like this that was started out as a Flash game that you'd like to see come back as a Steam game? Let me know in the comments. Which franchise you would like to see revived? Or, I mean, it's both revived and expanded nice. upon, because, like, this is the definitive way to play balloons. It off and on again? Now, they made it way better than the earlier versions that were only on Flash games. Yes. I think the game that I would like to see make it back uh, is called Sunny. You played as a zombie. They give a super generic uh, theming of the game for how all those flash games were set up. But yeah, you played as a zombie and you were able to kind of go down different class trees to specialize your character. And then um, when you went into battles, it was just like turn-based combat where you oh, yeah. picked from an ability wheel. And I just had it set up really clean. They had excellent controls going. Really clever, um, really clever use of unique upgrades on equipment. Like your equipment didn't just boost super base stats. It boosted more more interesting abilities for your characters. So it was really fun. Now what's amazing about what do they call it? Advanced Intel. Not only do these subs have range when of just like balloons in the radius of your other towers. They can also pop camo balloons if the tower that the camo balloon is in radius can shoot them. So it gives the subs the ability to target camos as well, which they don't normally have. If you keep going down this tree, then 
They can be a radius that permanently reveals camo balloons, but when they're doing that, they cannot attack. Having towers that don't attack are not something I'm interested in. I want towers that just do tons of damage. And thankfully we do catch this little bit of the path. This guy should extend our range enough that... I should have put a druid there. Give him the, the storm ability that will push balloons back. I could still do that, but I think I'm going to work on... Ooh, level 55. I think I'm gonna work on my other towers more first. And I can get one more boat, which we will. We love having these. And these ones are gonna combo all the damage. The damage per second on the ships when they are sandwiched between tracks is probably the highest of anything besides the Super Monkey or some of the super, super late game towers. Because he can fire out of both sides. Once we get up to destroyer and aircraft carrier, they just go insane. I love it. This is a upgrade to get an ability Usually I stay away from spending a lot of money just to get improved abilities because the way they always seem to go for me is that I feel like I'm wasting them whenever I just am sitting and not using them. So then I'll use them for the sake of using them and then it's right after they go back on cooldown that I need them and I end up getting beaten up that way. But right now we're doing pretty solid. We got 4,000 pops on him, 6,000 on him, only 2,000 on him. Hmm. So his build, I mean to be fair it's not as far. That's probably the main reason because he doesn't have as many pops. But he's still going to do a lot for damage against Moabs. And the point is to get him up and running quickly with the explosions. He can also pick up leads. Which this guy cannot, so he's bringing utility on the special balloon types, and he's bringing raw damage. And now I have an aircraft carrier. So good. Yeah, I really like having this hero because look at this. He's made us 5,200 bananas, and he only cost us like 1,200 or something. Well worth it. And there's still like 10 rounds to go. At the end of this one, I'm gonna make sure I stop and do kind of a surveillance of our whole build. See who the monkeys are that really carried us. It'll be fun. Question is do we go all the way up to flagship? I don't think we do. I don't think it's helpful. Now, getting this guy in here should be excellent. So he has potion. He has potion, he has potion, he has potion. Beautiful. And then... I think we put a, a sniper in range of the potion man. And we go for crazy damage and maiming Moabs. And this, so this is a way that we get the crowd control applied to the Moabs instead of using our helicopter trick. Helicopters are so expensive. Uh, we're gonna set this to spawn. Make sure it's actually been used. Helicopters are also really expensive on space. And so it's gonna be easier to put snipers down in range of our little brewmaster. Alright, let's get another one. This guy. 
Hmm, do we go for handling camo? Question is, do we think that these three towers are strong enough to handle all of the camo that's gonna come at us? I wanna play it safe. We're doing super well, so I think I can play it on the safe side. It hurts so much to make it towards these like final rounds. And then the game just says, surprise, we have way more camo balloons coming at you and you die and you get to replay the whole thing. Just like that. Uh, yeah, he popped a thousand camo balloons for us. Definitely worth it. Now I'm worried that I might need even more. But putting him up to full auto should be enough. It should be enough. I guess it also makes a difference on the camo rounds who gets the potion from the alchemist because if he's putting the potion on a guy who's not attacking the camo balloons, you're wasting that bonus. And the brew is, I mean the brew's not everything, but it's pretty strong right now, giving us a, a sizable advantage. Ooh. Light camos, so good. Alright, time to do what I said would be good a while ago. Oh, level 60. For some reason, I was playing that out in my mind of going to 80. So I didn't get the inventory of our towers or who our top achievers were. Pretty sure it was going to be the submarines. The submarines did the best. The subs were just popping so many. Though our aircraft carrier was probably up there as well. Alright. Ah, oh, this map is my nemesis. Brings back bad memories of earlier balloons. They've always had a castle level. Um, but they've had ones where the balloons are running along the ramparts instead of on this path. I think they ran the ramparts and they had the path. I forget exactly what the level looked like, but it was always really hard. But I think that now that we have our little subs, you know, we can tame the level. Giving them range up here it's pretty good because they have such a small piece of the path to target. And then... We need to figure out who we want up here. I think we go for Magic Monkeys. We get, yeah. Magic Monkeys for sure. Magic monkeys are kind of filling the place of being cheap and being able to target everything. Just super useful. Ooh, almost leaked a few. Would not have been good. This is the final level. Feels way better to be at 100 lives instead of 20, which is what I was at before. And I did not, I was bringing a different hero. I was playing Quincy, the archer, because he's able to target camos. My initial take was that on this Odyssey, the camo balloons were going to be the real danger. Because they didn't give you the option of taking a ninja, and ninja is usually the best thing against camos. Or it's maybe not the best thing, but it's what I use most often. So... Hmm... Yeah, without the ninja, I wanted to have another effective way of popping the camos. But Quincy just was not not good enough. Now let's see. I think we take a sub to universal range. And then we get him to be able to pop leads. And then we get one of the magic monkeys to go down the bottom upgrade path reveal camos and then we have a sub and a magic monkey 
spinning the camos. We have the sub also able to pop leads, and that lets us then pause to get Ben Jammin down. Five darts. Hmm. Round 11. I don't know if we're gonna have the exact path to get Ben Jammin that I usually like. This extra monkey Extra 400 gold, so we'll be 400 gold behind on Benjamin. Yeah, I don't think I needed him. But, I mean, we're going to use him in the end, so. We will be able to recover, it just will not be optimum. Alright, so he sees camos, and he does leads, and camos. If only his camo balloon comes down this path, we have a very short span to be able to get to him. But, now we just wait to be able to pick up Benjamin. And once we get him, we put our base level upgrades on the rest of our towers. Move forward from there. This level is very fun. I like that the trees here, if you click on a monkey. Well, you'd have to click on someone who could have range over there. But the trees are red, meaning that your monkeys cannot see or shoot through them. But you can see the balloons. You see the balloons coming at you and it's... Level up. Inevitable as they charge. Very fun. Have you Ooh. tried turning it off and on again? Leaked one. Then Jammin will bring us back, but we definitely need to. Dude. Here we go. Get some more popping power. Going up to triple guns. So good. Getting these guys up, also going to be very important. But I think I do triple guns first. Dude. Yeah, I don't need armor piercing rounds yet though. Alright. Fireball. Fireball, guided magic. Things are rolling in. Very nice. Wall of fire. Do they both have wall of fire yet? Nope. Okay, so... I like just stopping at wall of fire because the next thing, Dragon's Breath... Oh no, it's this. The fourth one is an ability. Hmm. I might get Dragon's Breath. For the Endless Flames versus Arcane Mastery. Ah, but the better range will also make my submarines better. Yeah, I feel like the better range for the, the reason of supporting the submarines is worth it. Yeah, that range increase is a lot. Yeah, we're gonna un, un camo next. And then look for the Necromancer. Ooh. No, we're not gonna look for the Necromancer. We're gonna look for damage against mobs, because we have those coming up in six rounds. Ooh, maybe we don't even do the camo. Ah, we can afford it. Oh yeah, we definitely need to get ballistic missiles running on this sub to be able to handle the round 40. And... I mean... If we can get armor piercing, that'd be even better. We want both, but if we can only get one, getting this submarine up to level 4 instead of this one up to level 3 
is the best option. Though it's looking now that we, we got set enough gold to be able to take both. Feels nice. The Odyssey is looking pretty good for us. Level up. We're just gonna need a few more pieces to come in. That'll be able to punish the Moabs. And honestly, I think it is gonna be these guys. Ooh, it could also be planes. Or helicopters. Or snipers. Could be whatever we want. We're doing pretty good. We have very strong revenue right now. These guys. Here he comes. Did Benjamin just kill him completely? Wow. Alright. I'm gonna go for the Moab shove. And we're gonna see the helicopter really dance on this level as he bounces between all the paths. <laughs> uh, this, this could be really bad. He's not going to get any kind of consistent um, push until the balloons are right here in the central path. And then he's going to be pretty effective. But until then, not nearly as effective. Oh, we want our, we want our necromancer. That's what we want. Yeah, now we definitely go for the necromancer. We're we'll probably we're not gonna see the Dark Lord again, the final upgrade here, because we're only going to around 60, but Necromancer. Yes. I'm very curious how he's gonna choose which paths to send the zombie balloons down. And mostly it looks like he makes bad decisions. So there you go. If we could just Get some more range on him, maybe? And then set you to strong. Because I feel like if he has more range, he'll put balloons in better spots. Ten thousand. We could afford that. That could be useful. It's a long way away, but... Right now we're holding well enough and we have the baseline done and all the subs, so... Whew, what is it again? Hmm, it doesn't want to stay up. I think it just gives him overall much stronger stats with his magic attack, his basic attack. And given that we're halfway there, I think that's the play. Uh, guys? Definitely the play. Handled it. Man. I don't know, like, Benjamin's hacks on the Moabs. I cannot tell if they're good or not, because he does it, and then we get like 11 money. Yeah, but the whole thing dies. It's probably time to figure out what he's actually doing to them, to know if I like it or not. I'm sure that he makes up for it with... Online. Right, here we go. Uh, bank hack. Okay, so first he hacks 100 every round. Then he goes to 150. Then he gives you your first power. Then, he gets an extra dollar for every balloon spawned. Then, he improves all your banks. He restores lives. Sends the Trojan software virus to a random balloon. Affect balloon spawn, no children when destroyed, and produce double cash. So we're getting double cash for when you 
pop the Moab itself, which is $11, and then it spawns nothing underneath that. So it's cutting away a lot of our money, like actually a lot of our money earned from the Moabs, but makes it way easier to deal with them. Hmm. 800 per round is so much. Uh, and the Trojan cannot affect the biggest balloons, the BFB and the DDT. My high lasts 9 seconds, and the final siphon funding lasts 20 seconds. Cash for pop is triple. It's the free play dream to make it up there. Okay, so we're looking at like what our final edition is going to be. Probably just stronger helicopter. No, I don't want stronger helicopter. Handled it. I like the snipers. We're gonna go strong. Fire fast. Push him up to Moab maiming. We have to hope that we have enough power to get through camo rounds. Alright, I'm gonna remove auto start so that right before the end we're able to take stock on all of our towers to see who who has carried us the way. I do like this core yeah. build. The magic monkeys, buffs from the alchemist, Benjamin putting in Online. so much work, helicopter with the shove, and then the, the really long range support that's going to push them. Alright, 58, two more rounds to the end of our odyssey. These monkeys were with us. The entire way. Wizard monkey here. Pops 16,000. Over here, also 16,000. So, working just as hard. Probably doing a little more damage because he got upgraded later. We run another one. Um, but the wizard monkey bringing the extra utility of letting everybody see camel balloons that pass through his range, and his range covers the bottleneck of all the paths. Dude. The alchemist has not popped anything of note, <laughs> um, but he is using his brew to buff these guys, which I think makes him worth his money. Sniper brand new, still pop 6,000, can now handle Moabs. Our monkey subs, this one with popping leads and doing bonus damage to Moabs, three and a half thousand. Eleven thousand here with just the raw damage, so pretty good, but actually not as good as our magic monkeys. The heli pilot, the very confused heli pilot, cannot figure what path he wants to fight along. Only three thousand. And then the MVP, he's made us ten thousand. And his hacks have uh, guys. really crippled the big balloons. This is where the helicopter is worth its weight as yeah. it just stops them in their tracks. Alright, there's the Odyssey. I love it. Time taken, almost two hours. Full lives remaining. Yeah. Very nice. Finish the journey that is placed. Open our chest. 150 monkey bucks. An instant monkey. 25 trophies. We'll collect on that. I'll get a quick threat. Sweet. That's actually a build of the druid that I really like. There we go. Now, if I replay it, I don't think... I get any rewards. I might be able to replay it on a higher difficulty to get more. I was running it on medium because the first time I ran it, 
I got tripped up. I think the reason was because I stayed away from the subs and I pushed pretty hard on using the pirate buccaneers over here. And they, when you try and start with them as an early tower, are just, their, their upgrades are too expensive. So you're banking all this money as balloons are leaking instead of having the the towers built up to handle them. They scale well in the late game, so that's why I was still able to win that level. It's just I leaked 80 lives. And then, playing this one, where you can only leak 20, and I did not have the subs again, which were such a good starting piece, I start leaking again, and you cannot manage it with only 20 lives. So this build where you have Benjamin to polish up any lives you leak, and You've got the subs and the magic monkeys as your starting base. Super solid. It'll be fun to see when they run another Odyssey event. I just love the idea of what towers you want and how many of each and then limiting some of the really strong combos. Um, and yeah, just having the chain of lives from event to event. I might stop myself from using Benjamin in another Odyssey because he seems to answer just a lot of the base challenges that the game puts into the Odyssey. So we'll probably run another one with him just to see what it's like and then cut him out and try some other heroes. All right, well. We accomplished pretty much what I wanted to accomplish, ran a race, lost, <laughs> lost the race, and then played through the entire Odyssey. We won that, and we got to work in, well we tried a co-op game, didn't quite go off. We tried a user level, uh, that was pretty clever, from an old build in the game, so we didn't beat it. but. It was fun to see a different take on the challenges than what you normally see for the daily challenges. We will cash out on our achievements. It's kind of a goal of mine to go through and win all the achievements free to play. I don't know how possible that is going to be given that there's stuff like this. Destroy 5,000 ZOMGs, and it says I'm at 0% there. I'm not sure why it says I'm at 0% because it's the last level on level 80, but then I have to destroy DDTs. I feel like I'm gonna have to play a lot of free play to get them, but I know that if I do that, you're gonna have levels where you get multiple ZOMGs, so you just have to get there and grind it out. There's just so many of these that I'm at 0% and I've been playing for a little while, so and this secret runs, whatever those are. This will be fun to, to work out, just, you know, keep returning to the game, um, play through the grind, and yeah, probably end up mixing up some of the channel content on the way, play some other strategy games, see just what's fun. There's a bunch of really fun ones right now that are out, and um, another advantage that I'm looking at there is they'll run on my computer pretty well, so try streaming those and then use the streams and cut some videos. Again, going for some achievements. We'll see if we target specifically more tower defense games or if we just kind of extend. I also really like the Paradox titles and Crusader Kings 3 right now looks super fun. Um, Though that game is a very slow burn. But I know it has a community that got named from the PC Gamer Game of the Year. Very exciting to see Paradox pick up something like that. And especially after the Imperator Rome release, to see them turn around and put a game out. Much, much better quality. Very encouraging to see. Well, I think I will be signing off for now. Let's see. Alright guys, it's been a blast. Love the stream. Thank you to everyone who came by. And then we'll go into the Odyssey. 
So the goals on these are a little bit different than the standard modes. For the race, they bring in a feature of some other tower defense games where you can accelerate waves and you're going for the fastest clear of the times put up there. I'm not sure if it's because people have figured out how they can exploit the game or if it's just big spenders who are using a lot of consumables to be able to put top times up there. But I mean, it's still an interesting competition for them to see just how small they can get their time. So right now the top time is like two minutes but we're gonna go for a good, just a solid clear here using the restrictions and see what we get to. We'll try and accelerate the waves as much as we can. Um, looking at the monkeys, well, we can go ahead, hop into the race, load on in. All right, so info about the race event. The timer will start once we press play so we can strategize as much as we want before then. Um, I don't think we can actually place any towers and sell for full refund, but we will begin. And I need to remember that there's a new hotkey I can use to automatically send the next wave. Alright, so this map is pretty generous in the way it's set up. The balloons are going to come down, cut up along the ski lift, and then go down the slope if you want to hit camel balloons. Which is pretty important, you need to think about the two balloon types that will always end your runs, which are Moabs and Camel Balloons. So we need to understand what towers are going to stop those, those types. And the Monkey Wizard here can be an option against the Camel Balloons. Um, I think with the build I want to run, he will be... So we're going to level him up a few times. We're going to get a druid to back him up. And then we're going to look at some engineers earlier on to help. They could also cut down on the camos and they can bring in pretty good damage against the Moabs. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anything else we want to set? I think we're going to go ahead and start the timer. So we are on the clock. Let's see how this goes. I've run this only a few times. I've not done too many races. The fan was extremely disappointing because I did not fully understand how the uh, accelerate wave worked. And so I'm used to just pressing, you know, move forward for sending the next wave. Well, the next wave was already on its way, I just hadn't seen it yet, so I sent two waves at once way earlier than I was prepared to handle it, and it just wrecked me. So, hopefully we do not have um, anything like that happen to us on this run. Alright, looking for our, our druid. Oh, we're going to leak a few here. But that's okay. Pop these. And then get the druid. Yeah, over here. We can upgrade his reach so that he's still able to clip this corner. And then he has the ability to hit the balloons at a lot of different points in their paths. A lot of tower defense games, you try and optimize how much of the path is in range. And here you see... He only has a few places where they are in reach, but he's hitting them at very different points. And the balloons in this game form large enough packs that as long as he's touching the path in a little bit, he'll be able to fire consistently. And then because he's able to catch them at different points, he's able to be pretty consistent uh, probably just as valuable as our little monkey wizard here, even though the monkey wizard is in a excellent coverage zone. Really, the the large amount of coverage is best if your tower does area of effect damage, and not many of the towers do that in balloons. So we're gonna go for an engineer here. He's gonna be one of our strong picks. Probably go for the balloon trap. Uh, I want someone with regrowth. Uh, cleansing foam for the camos, though. 
Hmm. If we take the camos... I hope it wasn't running the time though. I guess it might have been. We're gonna want two. One does the camp. Well, I also like the towers. Hmm. Hard decisions. Alright, so now we're ready for camos. It's just good to have that banked up. We can get... Mm -hmm. I think we're going to put our money into the engineer now. Go for our oversized nails and the grid path down here on the bottom. And try and remember and send waves a little bit earlier. Keep our time down because our towers are well equipped to be able to handle what the levels are throwing at us right now. We may have a challenge with the lead balloons, but I think that hmm, the the mage is going to be able to handle this. At least I hope so. I wonder if we want to push up arcane blast to be able to get that. Pin is just so good, and we'll set him the targeting strong balloons. That way we get. The crowd control on the larger ones, which are also usually faster. And then once he goes up to double gun, his pinning of the balloons just goes insane. Being able to stop two balloons at once for like a second, so useful. Yeah, I'm a little skittish on spamming the waves because... I don't want to suddenly lose and have a run cut short, but we'll see how it goes. I would like Arcane Blast to be ready. But the trap for 3000 calls to me. It gives you so much more money and it gives you stopping power on the balloons, but 3000 is probably too much to try and save up for right now. Mm, more popping power. Huge damage to most balloon types. I like the sound of huge damage to most balloon types. We'll just round out some of his upgrades here. Alright. Okay. 1,400. That's pretty well in reach of us being able to use here. Let's see if we can do another wave. I wish that it would also, well, it's probably too hard for them to balance. Sending waves early, giving you bonus money. There's another tower defense game that I used to play as a flash game that had a mechanic like that and it just made levels extremely frantic when you're spamming waves, they're giving you more money and then you're immediately trying to use the money to build enough to defend against these enormous combo waves that you've now sniped yourself with. And we do not actually kill leads with the monkey. Rookie mistake. Are we, gonna, are we gonna survive? No. Well, that's it for the race. Mm. Yeah, I thought the monkey popped lead balloons, but I think that's because the upgrade path I usually take him on gives him fireball and it's the fireball that pops them not as normal attack so when I was upgrading only his base attack it left us with no way to pop the leads if we'd taken fireball he wouldn't have been able to target camo balloons and then we would have had to put our engineer down targeting camo balloons hmm Probably just getting a normal monkey with the vision and then going crossbow for the camo balloons would have been enough. Or even doing the um, alchemist with the potion to be able to let normal towers pop leads. It's pretty useful. Working one of those in instead of the engineer might have been the better call. But that's how it goes. So. For the race, you can either spend premium currency to continue attempts or you have to wait and they 
only run it for a certain amount of time to kind of balance out the leaderboard so you don't have people that just grind it out like crazy but yeah you're the best time 207 a lot of twos i was looking earlier and there are people in the top 50 that had like 18 minutes but times have drastically improved since i last looked at this list I think our run was longer than this, 640. Hey James. Yeah, I can try your custom round. I'm ready for your reaction, easy standard. Well, my reaction is a thumbs up, but don't think I'm gonna be beating it. Ah, you only gave us one life too, I love it. 